थायरोइड मैलिग्नेंसीज आज मुझे डिस्कस करनी है मेडिसिन हम कर रहे हैं डेविडसन की टेक्स्ट बुक से लेट्स बिगिन आवर डिस्कशन ऑन थायरोइड न्योप्लेजिया सो पेशेंट्स विद थायरोइड ट्यूमर्स यूजुअली प्रेजेंट विद सॉलिटरी नॉड्यूल सो दिस इज वन थिंग दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर कि दीज आर द पेशेंट्स हु यूजुअली do not present with diffuse goiter okay so they will have uh, you know single nodule which is palpable so solitary nodule and many of these neoplasias are benign tumors however few of these uh, can be malignant as well okay less than 1% of all the carcinomas are actually uh, you know uh, thyroid malignancy so it's, it's a fairly rare contribution to the overall number of cancers so primary thyroid malignancy is rare and it accounts for less than 1% of all the cancers reported okay so let's first talk about the uh, benign variant which is what we called uh, the adenoma in usual terms however toxic adenoma this particular word uh, typically means that this is a benign tumor that's why it's called adenoma and toxic because it is secreting excessive thyroid hormone so it is not silent tumor it is benign but it is not silent because this tumor is going to secrete t3 t4 and therefore the patient will be experiencing signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism okay a solitary toxic nodule is the cause of less than 5% of all the cases of thyrotoxicosis obviously main aapko bataya ki this is toxic adenoma so the patient will be releasing a lot of t3 t4 so the patient will be experiencing thyrotoxicosis but the cancer itself is benign the nodule is follicular adenoma because it arises due to hyperproliferation of follicular cells in the thyroid which autonomously excrete excessive thyroid hormones and obviously when we have a lot of thyroid hormones they are going to suppress the levels of tsh so tsh is going to go down okay now the adenoma is usually greater than 3 cm in diameter it's a big one then most patients are female and over the age of 40 although many nodules are palpable the diagnosis can be made certainly only by thyroid scintigraphy obviously palpation se aapko ye nodule feel ho sakta hai somewhere in the thyroid gland but the diagnostic test would include some sort of imaging taki aapko baqaida wo nazar aaye ke yes we are looking at a tumorous growth okay and as i told you thyroid toxicosis is present it is usually mild and in almost 50% of the patient the plasma t3 alone is elevated which has a specific name called t3 thyroid toxicosis okay iodine 131 is highly effective and is ideal treatment since the atrophic cells surrounding the nodule do not take up the iodine so if you have a thyroid gland and this is the adenoma and this is toxic adenoma so if you treat the patient with radioactive iodine these are going to uptake it and the cells will be inhibited so that's the ideal management for these patients and therefore um iske ilawa koi aur treatment ki aksar zarurat rehti nahi hai for this reason permanent hypothyroidism is unusual because jo aas paas ke normal cells hain they are not going to uptake iodine 131 and these will not be inhibited so it's kind of very much targeted therapy for uh, toxic adenoma hemi thyroidectomy is an alternative management option so iska matlab ye hai ki thoda sa part of the thyroid nikal de remove kar de which is what we call hemi thyroidectomy but that is only reserved for the cases who are not responding to the radioactive iodine ablation okay so pretty simple stuff um, toxic adenoma that's a benign tumor of follicular cells and you manage it by giving radioactive iodine okay then we have another category which is now the cancers the carcinoma the malignant beds okay and when we say differentiate it carcinoma that basically means that by looking at these cancers you can tell that these are from thyroid gland therefore they are called differentiated undifferentiated ka matlab hota hai when you cannot identify the origin of tissue so for example if there is a tumor in breast and if you excise the tumor look in the microscope you can still identify some normal mammary cells then you call it differentiated tumor but if you identify a tumor where you cannot identify ki ye kaun se cells hain tumor itna bizarre ho gaya hai ki usne apna original shape and structure lose kar diya that's what you call undifferentiated so let's talk about some of the differentiated carcinomas of thyroid so the first one is papillary carcinoma This is the most common of all the malignant thyroid tumors and accounts for 90% of the radiation induced thyroid cancer so that one is the most common it may be multifocal which means they can be different foci and the spread is initially to the regional lymph nodes some patients present with cervical lymphadenopathy and no apparent thyroid enlargement in such instances the primary lesion may be less than 10 mm so um patient may present with nodules may present without palpable nodules and only the same terms but that is the most common cancer remember okay 
Follicular carcinoma is a single encapsulated lesion, so it looks like benign, but that's actually malignant. Spread to the cervical lymph node is rare, as opposed to the papillary, there you get cervical lymph node involvement. Metastases are blood-borne, and they are usually found in bone, lungs, and brain. Okay, so these two variants, uh, pretty simple, straightforward. How do you manage them? The management of thyroid cancer should be individualized and planned in the multidisciplinary team involving, you know, uh, chemotherapists, oncologists, pathologists, radiologists, endocrinologists, surgeons. All, so that should be a multidisciplinary team. Large tumors, those with adverse histological features and or tumors with metastatic disease are usually managed by total thyroidectomy. Pura thyroid nikal de. Because there are tumor cells in there who have already metastasized, okay? And you give large doses of I-131 to suppress the, uh, you know, the remaining normal, yeah, remaining malignant tumor tissue. So, uh, remove the thyroid and shut off the remaining thyroid. Therefore, long-term treatment with levothyroxine is dose sufficient to suppress TSH is given. It has to be given because now you have removed the whole thyroid. So, you have to give thyroxine in patients. Ko. Now, smaller tumors with no adverse histological features may require only thyroid lobectomy. So, if these are big tumors, remove the whole thyroid. If metastasis is there, if they are small tumors, only do the lobectomy, partial thyroidectomy. Okay? Follow-up involves measurement of serum thyroglobulin. Obviously, you uh, thyroid function test kar in follow-up. Mein. Thyroglobulin antibodies may interfere with the SA, well, not necessary. Local recurrence or metastatic disease may be localized by ultrasound, CT scan, MRI. So, we are talking about the patient ke surgery kar di hai, and now the patient is doing the follow-up. So, you do the thyroid function test, you do the ultrasound, CT scan, ke koi residual tumor to nahi bacha, tumor dobara regrowth to nahi kar raha. So, that sort of thing, okay? Now, iodine-131 treatment in thyroid cancer and isotope scanning both require serum TSH concentration to be elevated to a level of uh, more than 20 million international units. So, this may be achieved by stopping level thyroxine for 4 to 6 years. So, this is how you give I-131 management, okay? Patients usually find later approach preferable. So, you always have to include patient in the planning the management, okay? Those with locally advanced and metastatic papillary and follicular carcinoma that is refractive to iodine-131 may be considered for therapy by sorafinib and limit time. So, if iodine-131 uh, is unable to suppress the normal remaining tissue and the malignant residuals, then these have been tried, okay? But still, the mainstay of the treatment is remove the thyroid, shut off the remaining tissue by I-131. Now, these drugs are multi-targeted tyrosine kinase inhibitors. We know levatinib and sorafenib. Uh, they have multiple toxicities as well, including, you know, what not, poor appetite, weight loss, fatigue, diarrhea, rashes, bloody, uh, actually, dyscrasias as well. So, your hematopoiesis and stuff. So, potential benefit of uh, therapy, therefore, have to be carefully weighed against the side effects. So, whenever you are planning to start um, these tyrosine kinase inhibitors, always think about it, okay? Now, prognosis, most patients with these two tumors, papillary and follicular, uh, will be cured if the treatment is given appropriately. Adverse prognostic factors include older age. So, if a patient has been old age, ke present kiya hai, that's, a, that's a bad prognostic sign. Presence of distant metastasis. Male gender. Male gender is high risk for bad prognosis, okay, and certain histological types. However, I-131 therapy can be effective in treating those patients with distant metastasis, particularly small volume disease in the lungs. So, uh, you need to know the bad prognostic indices. Generally speaking, these two tumors, papillary carcinoma and follicular carcinoma, they are not very bad tumors to have. Uh, I mean, they are treatable and the prognosis is by and large good, okay. So, if you look at these tumors, um, so, uh, papillary and uh, follicular, these are labeled as differentiated tumors, okay? Now, we also have a category which is called anaplastic carcinoma and lymphoma. Now, these two conditions are difficult to distinguish clinically but are distinct cytologically and histologically. And clinically, they present the same but only if under the microscope you look at them, you identify a difference here. Patients are usually over the age of 60, so old age and present with rapid thyroid enlargement within 2 to 3 months. So, that's a sign uh, which the patient will tell you, okay, you have to say, my thyroid is so big. The goitite is very hard and there may be striter due to tracheal compression. It is so big that the trachea is compressed, the hoarseness is so big, the recurrent laryngeal nerve uh, palsy is so big. There is no effective treatment for anaplastic carcinoma, dangerous thing. Surgery and radiotherapy may be considered to reduce the bulk of the tumor. An older patient, median survival is only 7 months, so uh, that one is deadly, guys. 
okay the prognosis for lymphoma which may arise from pre-existing hashimoto many pishli videos mein bataya tha ke hashimoto has a tendency to get to lymphoma stage or iska median survival is better than anaplastic cancer it's about nine years some 98 percent of the tumors are non-hodgkin lymphomas and um, usually the uh, dlbcl category diffuse large b cell subtype of lymphoma which is what we call dlbcl okay the Treatment is combination of chemotherapy, sometimes surgery. You also use some radiotherapy. But let me tell you, these two tumors, anaplastic and lymphoma, uh, poor prognosis. Okay, overall poor prognosis. We know that these two were good. I told you, unki management hai surgery kar le, I one thirty one de de, papillary and follicular. They were good tumors, but these two nasty tumors. You imagine anaplastic cancer only seven month after diagnosis, patient is dead. Okay, serious stuff. Then there is another category called medullary cancer. That these arises from para follicular, not the follicular, but the para follicular uh, follicles. के साथ जो cells हैं of the thyroid. In addition to calcitonin, the tumor may secrete because para follicular cells do secrete calcitonin, and if they overgrow, they secrete a lot of calcitonin. They also release 5-HT serotonin. Various peptides also are released, and uh, ACTH prostaglandins are inclusive. A consequence, as a consequence. Carcinoid syndrome and Cushing syndrome may occur because you are getting a lot of uh, ACTH and you are getting a lot of um, uh, other, you know, stuff which can lead to carcinoid syndrome, for example. So these patients present not only with a thyroid complaint but other systemic complaints as well. Patients usually present in the middle age with a firm thyroid mass. Cervical lymph node involvement is common, but distant metastasis is rare, at least initially. Serum calcitonin levels are raised, understandable, and are useful in monitoring the response to the management. So, despite the very high levels of calcitonin found in some patients, hypocalcemia is not usually observed because that is being managed by the body. Treatment is by total thyroidectomy. Pura thyroid remove karna is just like uh, papillary and uh, follicular cancers. And also, you remove the lymph nodes which are associated. Since the C cells do not concentrate iodine and are not responsive to TSH, so I one thirty one ka koi role nahi hai because we are talking about para follicular cell. If it was the follicular tumor, we give I one thirty one to suppress it. But yaha to para follicular cells hai na, wo unhone I one thirty one lena hi nahi hai. Jab lena nahi hai, toh hum ye use kyu karenge? Hai na? However, external beam radiotherapy may be considered in some patients. Um, when datinib and cabozanitib are also tyrosine kinase limiter, they are licensed for patients with progressive advanced medullary cancer. The prognosis is less good than for papillary and follicular. So those were the best thyroid cancers, yeah. Uh, but still, iski bhi medullary cancer ki bhi prognosis itni buri nahi hai. It's at least better than anaplastic cancer. Now, medullary carcinoma of thyroid occurs sporadically in, um, you know, 70 to 90 percent of cases. It can also be having genetic component in at least 10 to 30 percent of cases. Okay, red gene is involved. Must remember, this inherited tendency normally forms part of one of the men's syndrome. Uh, we know the multiple endocrine neoplasia, so uh, men too. Uh, maybe uh, this cancer is involved medullary carcinoma or men3 as well but occasionally susceptibility to medullary carcinoma is only the inherited trait without other endocrine involvements okay right uh, now i want to discuss this table in the last uh, this is malignant thyroid tumors type of the tumor and uh, follicular cells so if follicular cells are involved uh, these are usually differentiated cancers including papillary and follicular and it can be undifferentiated which is anaplastic uh, the most common is frequency wise papillary then follicular anaplastic is rare but it is presented in old age and has uh, bad survival basically okay and these two have good survival 98 94 percent 10 year survival yani 98 percent of the patients diagnosed with papillary cancer will be alive after 10 years of diagnosis that's how you read it okay uh, so 94 98 and only nine all right now there are tumors which may arise from the cells near to the uh, follicular cells so these are follicular cells and next to follicular cells are parafollicular cells this is what we call medullary carcinoma um, okay survival rate but less as compared to papillary and follicular usually more than uh, 40 years and um, it is not as common as papillary and follicular and then we have lymphoma um, like 50 50 survival rate about 45 percent uh, 10 year survival rate after diagnosis uh, usually in old age so old age mein aapko lymphoma mil raha hai aur anaplastic cancer mil raha hai 
ओके सो दैट्स एन इंपॉर्टेंट टेबल कि कौन से सेल्स इन्वॉल्व हैं और किसकी फ्रीक्वेंसी कितनी है एंड व्हाट इज द एज एट प्रेजेंटेशन राइट सो दैट्स ऑल अबाउट द थायराइड कैंसर्स एंड देन वी विल टॉक अबाउट बल्कि ये भी मैं साथ ही निपटा देता हूं रेडल्स थायराइड एटस दिस इज नॉट अ कैंसर बट द प्रेजेंटेशन इज सिमिलर and the differentiation can usually be made only by thyroid biopsy it is an exceptionally rare condition of unknown etiology so very rare and unknown etiology in which there is what happens ke extensive infiltration of thyroid and surrounding structure by the fibrous tissue so the thyroid gland is basically now overwhelmingly um, you know converted into a fibrous tissue aur ye biopsy pe confirm karenge aap you take the thyroid out do the biopsy see if there is a lot of fibrous tissue there may be associated mediastinal and retroperitoneal fibro is as well the presentation with a slow growing goiter a irregular and stony hard type of thyroid there is usually tracheal and esophageal compression necessitating thyroidectomy other recognized complications also include uh, nearby nerve palsy such as recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy hypoparathyroidism initially hypothyroidism because the whole thyroid tissue is converted into a fibrous tissue so basically redel's thyroiditis is a fibrous thyroid gland patients and physicians are worried because they present with a hard thyroid mass and i mean the initial worry would obviously be the cancer okay can cancer to nahi hai is patient ko but then you do the biopsy and you come to know that this is all fibrous and non malignant cells okay so that's not a cancer but it can compress trachea it can compress recurrent laryngeal nerve so you may have to remove the thyroid gland okay so that's all about thyroid malignancies all the very best i'll see you in another video of medicine very soon My name is Professor Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr Asif Lectures